Hey everybody, this is Huang, and today we're going to go over a competitive guide for Ragna Lordmon Black. So, let's get started. To kick us off, let's start with the sword between the sword and shield, Durandamon. Durandamon, when shoved underneath Ragna Lordmon, bestows piercing. With the piercing, Ragna Lordmon is capable of doing 2 damage minimum to your opponent, 3 with Metal Greymon, or 4 if you include Tai as well in the mix. 4 damage in a single swing is an excessive amount, and your opponent won't be able to deal very much to it. If you have ways to pump up the power through Kapurimon and such, you're able to make it so you don't lose to opposing level 7s either. So, using the sword, your offense is extremely powerful. Next up, we have the shield for Ragnar Lordmon, Brywildramon. This card is the easiest between the sword and shield to use, as blocker is a much more generic application and isn't so specific like piercing is. Making Ragnar Lordmon a 14k blocker means that it will only lose to Digimon that have received a significant DP boost or Omnimon thus making this a really strong card overall. Finally, we get to the boss himself, Ragna Lordmon. This card has the most keywords of any level 7, even going forward all the way up to the BT5 format. If you pass the turn on Digivolving into Ragna Lordmon, he will then put the memory back if you shove a level if you shove Duranda or Broludramon, thus making it still your turn. This is really really impactful because this card is some serious amount of tempo that you're inflicting. Not only are you inflicting potential 2-4 to four security attack, not only do you have reboot, but you also have piercing and blocker as well. There's so much tempo that you can obtain from this card, it's not even funny. Now finally, we get to the main chunk of the video, the deck list itself, and we're going to go over all the card choices and why. But Ragnar Lordmon as a deck is very vanilla until level 7, but on that level 7 turn, you're very explosive. And so, we want to make sure our early game is safe, so we can get to that part of the game. We play 4 Kapurimon because we have a significant amount of reboot in this deck through Toy Agumon and Ragnar Lordmon himself. Making Metal Greymon 8k, making all of your 12k level 6s with the Toy Agumon 13 is all significant. We play the 1 Kakingmon because it's a bit slow, but there's no other better egg in black, and black as a deck is very stylish. We play 4, vanil four Vanillas because Vanillas are a good follow-up to Ragnar Lordmon. We play 4 Toy Agumon because it turns our 12k level 6s into reboot and thus being able to swing, which is impactful. We play 4 Ludomon because Ludomon is a black-based Digimon, as well as giving us consistency, and we also play the Zubamon. We play 2 Zubamon because consistency is king, and it's a cheap uh, hardcast. Now the reason why we play 6 Searchers is because that is the edge Ragnar Lordmon has over other decks. It is very consistent. We play 4 Numemon because it's a cheap hardcast as well as a 1 cost evolution, 2 Gardramon because it is a blocker that helps us keep safe in the early game, 2 Tia Ludomon because D Digivolve is a really powerful mechanic, and especially against Omnimon decks as it allows you to break over them. As well as 3 Tankmon because Tankmon is also a cheap evolution. 4 Metal Greymon coming up because A it gives us reboot on turn 5, or rather on level 5, which is making us less vanilla, as well as giving Ragnar Lordmon potential 1 security attack as well, or the other level 6s if they have Toy Agumon underneath. 4 Raiji Ludo because the D Digivolve mechanic is extremely powerful. We play 2 of the shield and 4 of the sword, and the reason why we have this ratio, despite us saying the shield is much more applicable, is because as long as we shove one of them underneath the Ragnar Lordmon, it's totally fine. So, Red Duranda, Duranda on the sword, is more powerful on level 6, and the reason why for that is because we gain access to, to Tai as well as Gaia Force, making our level 6 turn much less vanilla, versus having Bry Wildra, which doesn't do anything for us on turn 6. Once we go into a level 6 like Duranda or Blitz, we can just shove in the shield and still get the blocker inheritable, which is really key. We play 3 Blitz Greymon because against other meta decks, we being able to digivolve them for 2 is really, really powerful, especially versus decks like Omnimon or Green. We play 3 Ragnar Lordmon and not 4 because we have access to Searchers, and we play 1 Omnimon because the Sword and Shield inheritables are not exclusively to Ragnar Lordmon, thus we can give Omnimon inheritables like Blocker or Piercing. 2 Gaia Force because we have Zubamon as well as multiple red top end in order to cast this, plus Tai. And Tai gives us Security Attack plus 1 for our level 6 as well as Ragnar Lordmon. So, that is the list. In terms of matchup, Ragnar Lordmon is a relatively slow deck, and so you want to play cards that make it so you're less vanilla in the early game, and that you can reach your wincon, aka Ragnar Lordmon. You also have to take into account memory blockers such as Terriermon, Gazimon, that will stop you from using Ragnar Lordmon's plus 3 memory ability, and thus you can use cards like Aquilamon to destroy them preemptively.
Overall, Ragnar Lordmon is a very vanilla deck until level 7, but on level 7, you explode onto the board and take a lot of tempo away from your opponent. Use early blockers, use early reboots and such to deter your opponent from contesting completely in the early game. Thanks for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment, thank you.